Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks and welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Today's video is Belfast 1979, Stories from the Troubles. You see, I've been asked by uh, a few of my subscribers if I could relate to you uh, some of my war stories. Well, I've got a couple here right from the heart of the Troubles of Northern Ireland when I was just a young soldier. So, perhaps I ought to explain before I get into my stories, the Troubles. The Division of Ireland, yeah, the North from the South, it's an incredible story, it's very complicated, but we ended up with the six counties of Ulster being separated from the Free State of Ireland. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, should have been left as one, but hey, that's just Kevin. But what it meant was you had such a division in the north of Ireland, Catholics, Protestants, or Protestants, Catholics. The majority of people got on fine, but there was terrorist organizations, there was mistakes made by the local government, by the government of Britain, by everybody. And it led to what we call the Troubles, which was almost open warfare on the streets of Northern Ireland. People being burned out of their houses, gunned down, bombed, blown to pieces. It was just hellish. And the British army was put in right in the middle to keep them apart. And sometimes I felt that everybody hated us. Everybody wanted to kill us. And then you'd have some sweet old lady who would want to give you a cup of tea, a slice of apple pie. I often say when people say to me, you know, what was Northern Ireland like? I say it left a stain on my soul because you can't get your head around it. Lovely, lovely Irish people bent on killing each other. And we were there to try and stop it. So Belfast, 1979. It should be Belfast, 1979 stroke 1980 because I was there for the, the two years. No names, no pack drills. I'll just tell you what happened. I used to um, volunteer sometimes for extra jobs because uh, one of the problems of patrolling the streets of Belfast or any other part of the province of Northern Ireland back in the Troubles was boredom, complacency, and I used to get bored. So I would volunteer. So I volunteered to go on a, a bit of an intelligence gathering mission. We would got to look at a, a certain address and make note of who was coming or going. We were in, shall we say, enemy territory. So it was quite dangerous, but there was a lot of us soldiers. And we'd taken up position, would you believe, in a cemetery, a graveyard. Typical, isn't it? So we're all camouflaged up and we've got our war paint on and goodness knows what. And we infiltrate and we all go to ground. And then we set up our covert operation, shall we say. It was nice e evening, really. Um, wasn't that cold and everybody was relaxed, um, except for the fact, of course, we were in enemy territory. And I've been told, you can go and take a break, just go into the cemetery a little bit deeper, have a lie down. So we couldn't smoke, we couldn't drink or anything like that. We were totally covert. And I lay back on a grave, which just so happened to have an open book for the headstone. So I rested my head on there muttering an, an apology to the people who were in the grave, you know. And I'm right next to the one side of the cemetery and uh, all of a sudden, a light. I am totally floodlit. And I'm going, oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. My radio earpiece, you know, what's going on, what's going on? And when I moved my eyes to the left, I could see a lady in an apartment just overlooking the cemetery had opened up her main curtains and the floodlight was in fact the light from her house so in no time at all I've got a sergeant has come down he's sidled up next to me he's gone okay all right then just keep an eye on it so I'm keeping an eye on it when the woman starts to dance and then I realize that the sergeant hasn't left and I'm looking up and this woman's dancing she's taken off her jacket she's dancing around now I don't know she may have been there to divert our attention she perhaps didn't even know we were there. Hey, yeah, who would expect it? So she's dancing away, and then I realise that she's dancing away, getting ready for bed, because she clothes are coming off, and before I know it, the sergeant is there, so is the staff sergeant, so is the other corporal, so is the lance corporal, and uh, she's 
really having a great time, this woman. And I, I give her my thanks because when she'd finally finished, she's dancing around, she then closed the curtains. Darkness. And in that darkness, I think there were about 18 soldiers all around. We'd left just two guys to look at the address we were supposed to be watching. And uh, we filtered out, got back to base, and we're all kind of giggling, you know, because, hey, wow, that was fun, wasn't it? And uh, we get back to our intelligence people, and we say, you know, we were there, and they went, oh, sorry, we sent you to the wrong address. So this is my second little kind of funny story, I suppose. We say funny, but it was actually deadly. We had been put into an area to um, possibly engage the enemy, shall we say, yeah? My job was to be in a certain location, which we'd already done a recce on, a reconnaissance, and I'm in a bush. Um, there's plenty of room under this bush, and I'm crouching down, and my rifle is resting, looking at a particular area. It's very tense because a lot of soldiers had been killed recently in, in my tour and also a lot of civilians had lost their lives with various murders and whatnot. So it was very, very serious. And of course, we're in the heart of an area that hated the British, yeah, in Belfast. And uh, I've settled down and I'm quite comfortable, but I'm camouflaged up, yeah. And all of a sudden, I hear voices coming and I'm thinking, oh, what am I gonna do? Now my rifle was pointing that way. So I drew my pistol. Yeah, they were all loaded, ready to go. So I just basically froze. They couldn't see me from the outside. I was well covered up. But I can see out of the bush and it's a young couple. By the lamplight of the street, I can see this young courting couple, probably mid to late teens, bless them. And uh, they come towards my bush. And I'm thinking, why are they coming towards my bush? Then they get in, my bush. Never occurred to me that it wasn't my bush, it was their bush. And they'd probably been coming to their bush for a long time because they were very comfortable in their bush until he laid the young lady's head down and it just caught the top of my boot as she put her head down. She didn't notice. I'm there with a pistol and a rifle and a face that's all camouflaged up. They're kissing, they're cuddling, they're getting down to what young courting couples do, if you follow my drift. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of this? Because there's going to be screaming, there's going to be this. And as I looked down, the young lady's eyes met mine. She must have been terrified. I was terrified. She was terrified. He was oblivious as to what's going on. She could see I had a pistol. She could see I had a rifle. So what I did with my little finger, I went, shh. And I simply ran. I've often wondered, did they carry on? Did they stop? Was she made pregnant? We'll never know the truth. Just one more of the stories of Kevin. So I hope you've enjoyed our, our little film. Well, if you liked it, thumbs up, please. Those of you who are already a subscriber, hey, thanks a bunch. If you're not a subscriber, hey, ding the bell, join in and have some fun with history. Bye for now.